Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on the Rubik's 3x3 cube. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you a method for solving the first two steps of this, the seven-step solution guide, if you will. The reason that I'm making this video is because I use a different method for steps one and two than you'll find in this solution guide. Um, all the steps in this guide require memorization, and really, steps one and two can be done intuitively. You really shouldn't need memorization. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be showing you, a method that requires no memorization and is actually more efficient than the method you'd find here. Um, and when I say efficient, that's rather important because that means you'll be able to solve the cube more quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. Our goal today in this video is going to be to learn, as I said, the first two steps. And steps one and two basically mean solving one side of the Rubik's Cube. What does that look like? Well, solving one side of the cube looks like this, if we're going for the white side. Okay, um, so let's go start off with some basics. I'm guessing you're watching this video because you're relatively new to the Rubik's Cube, so let's start off with some fundamentals. The Rubik's Cube is made up of three types of pieces. Uh, the first would be corner pieces, okay, as you can see, this corner piece is red, white, and blue. Uh, edge pieces are made up of two colors. As you can see, this is an edge piece. It's made up of blue and white. This one is red and white. And here we have red and blue. And then the last type of piece is a uh, center piece. Center pieces are only made up of one color. As you can see, blue and red. And center pieces are important because they actually determine the color for that side. So, for example, this side here is the blue side. Not because we've put these three blue pieces in, but because the center is blue. It means that in order to solve the entire side, I'm going to need to get blue pieces here, 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 and here. And same here with the red side. In order for this to be solved, all, this, all the pieces on this side will need to be red. Okay? Let me show you another example, because there's a lot of times people will say, oh, I can solve one side of the Rubik's Cube, that's as far as I can get. Here's probably why. Take a look at this cube for a second. At first glance, the two will look quite similar, right? White side is solved on both sides. Well, not exactly. As you can see, let's compare the red side on both. You'll notice the red side on my solved cube is red all along this top layer here. Three red squares to match the center red. Not the same on this one, okay? This piece belongs here. It's white and red. The white, of course, matches the center. This red matches that center, okay? But these two pieces are not red, and they need to be. If you look at this side, which is the blue side, these two red corners actually belong here, okay? So even though I got white on one side, this cube has not been solved properly. Okay, I really don't have the white side solved correctly on this cube. Okay, so we want to avoid this. I'm going to be teaching you this method, getting one color in all the right places. So let's go ahead and get going, see what that looks like. Step number one is going to be getting the cross, or it looks like a plus sign. Step number two, when we're finished with this, is going to be going back and putting in our four corners. Okay, but step number one is just this plus sign. So regardless of what your cube looks like, don't worry about the corners just yet. We just want to get this white cross on top. Okay, and let's take a look at how we're going to do that. I'll put this one off to the side. And as I look at the white side, I'll notice that, uh, as, as, and again, as we said, we need the cross, we need, right? We need the plus sign on top. And one of my four edge pieces is already on top, this one right here. Okay, I have one, two, three, four edges that need to be white on top. And here's one, red and white. But you'll notice it's not in the correct location. This red does not match the center, which here is blue. Okay, So I need to bring this red square over to the red side. This one's pretty easy. I can just rotate the top just like that. And I've put in now my first edge piece. One down and three more to go. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, here. I have a blue and a white piece. Well, this blue and white piece needs to go here. 
and it might seem easy enough to just rotate it straight up. Well, that doesn't quite work, does it? I have the blue and white in the correct place, but it's backwards. The white needs to be on top, the blue needs to be here. So that doesn't work. Let me put it back where it was. Okay, It was right here on the side. If you think about it, in order to get this blue and white square here, I need to connect this blue square with the blue center. Just like I did before with this one. I connected this red square to the red center. So let's do that. Let's bring this blue so that it's touching the blue center. And one of the easiest ways to do it is to move it to the bottom layer. Watch. I rotate this side down. And now the blue and white is on the bottom, this bottom layer. Now it's in position for me to bring it over to match it to the blue center. And there it is. I now have the two blues touching. The white is on the bottom. Okay, But I don't want the white on the bottom. I want the white on the top. So how do I do that? Just rotate it clockwise. Once, twice. And there it is. Two whites are touching. The two blues are touching. Two down, two to go. I still need to get white and orange here and white and green here. Let's take a look. Here's another situation. Green and white, it's already on the bottom layer. I need to connect this green with the center green, just like I did a moment ago. I take the bottom layer, I rotate it, my greens are touching, white is on the bottom, I want it on top, rotate clockwise, moves it up. All right, only one left, and here it is, white, orange. Again, it's already in the bottom layer. Connect this orange with the center orange. There it is, touching. White goes on top, rotate it clockwise. And there you have it. That is step one. Okay. A couple other scenarios I'll take you through. We'll do it again. It's good practice. Sometimes you'll have a scenario like this. The orange and the white are in their correct location, as we saw a moment ago, but it's what? It's backwards, okay? So, I can do that pretty easily, moving it off to the side. Now, I don't need to bring this green and, or I'm sorry, this white and orange piece all the way to the bottom layer as I did before. I can just rotate this side down, getting my oranges to touch. White goes on top, just like that, okay? Ah, here's another one. Red and white. This red square needs to come over here. Okay? Watch this. This is a nifty little move. This red and white is going to travel here so that it's touching the red center. And I do that by rotating this piece. Two reds touching. White goes on top. Okay? So we've got red, we've got orange, and we've got two more that need to go into position. Let's take a look. Here we are, green and white. Another green and white edge piece. The greens need to be connected. White needs to go on top, rotate clockwise. And there you have it. One left, blue. As you get used to solving the cube, you're going to find that the colors that there are certain colors that are opposite each other. So for example, the white side is always opposite yellow. The red side is always opposite orange. And the green side is always opposite blue, which means this blue square needs to go on the back side. Take a look. Here's the blue side. So just as I did a moment ago, I'm going to rotate a piece from one side all the way over to the other side. This blue piece actually needs to go all the way over here. Now the two blues are touching, white goes on top, there you have it. Now, we have three, but we lost our fourth one. In the process of doing that, we, we lost our white red piece. We moved it out of position. So we just have to remember to restore that. Anytime we make a move that kind of messes up something we've already uh, accomplished, we just need to fix it. So this white goes back on top, and we rotate it up. And there you have it. And that's a few of the different um, situations that you'll find when you're trying to solve the white cross. Okay, And that's it. I hope that was helpful.
that's step one and take a quick break and come back and we'll work on step number two. Step number two, as I mentioned, now that we have our white cross, is going to be getting in our four corner pieces. When I finished getting my cross, I also had a white square here. But that didn't matter because, again, our goal was just the white cross. Step two is going to be getting our corners in. Another reason that this piece doesn't matter is because, as you can see by looking at it, it's not even in the correct position. Okay? This corner piece is green, red, and white. The piece that actually belongs here is going to be red, white, and blue. Okay? So we can ignore that piece for now. Let me go ahead and show you how we're going to be able to put in our corner pieces easily and pretty quickly. Okay? The first thing we need to do is identify where a piece belongs. So, take a look at this piece. This piece is white, blue, and orange. Okay? Which means we need to find the blue and orange sides. Here's the blue side, and here's the orange side. White, of course, is on top. What does that tell me? It tells me that this blue, white, and orange piece belongs here. Okay? First thing we need to do is take our piece and position it underneath where it belongs. Here's what I mean. This piece belongs here. We want it underneath. Okay? Now it's directly below where it belongs. We're going to do a quick little sequence which is going to take it and move it straight up top. Okay? So, find a piece, put it underneath where you want it, okay? and it's three moves to get it up top. Hold your cube like this, and look at the white square, because the white square is the one that's going to go right on top here. And ask yourself, is the white square on the right side, or is it on the left side? Sometimes it'll be here, sometimes it'll be here. Okay? If it's on the right side, put your right hand on it. If it's on the left side here, put your left hand on it. And it's going to be three moves to move it up top. Down, over, up. Now, I promised you there was no memorization involved in this method, and you really don't need to memorize it once you understand it. But for now, it might be helpful to actually say those moves as you do them. Okay? So, again, down, over, up is the three moves. Down means putting your hand on this side. In my case, my piece is on the right, so I use my right hand, and I turn it down. Down means towards me. This would be away from me. Down means towards me. Okay? That's down. Over means bringing you this piece over to connect with this piece. Over. And up means bringing it back up top where it belongs. So again, that was three moves. Down, over, and up. Let's do another one. Here's another one. White orange, green. Does it belong here? No. So I need to put it underneath where it belongs. Orange side, green side. White, of course, is on top. This piece belongs here. So I've put it underneath where it belongs. Once again, my white piece is on the right side. So I use my right hand and I go down. That's the first move. Notice what that does. It allows me to connect these two pieces. Over brings them together, and up puts them back up on top. Down, over, and up. Let's do another one. Ah, we don't have any others. And here's what I mean when I say we don't have any others. In order to move a piece up top, it needs to be here in this bottom level or bottom layer of the cube. You can think of a Rubik's Cube as having three levels or three layers. Let's call this layer one. The middle is 2, and this is 3. This is the bottom layer. Okay. Before, I was able to move pieces up top because that white square was either on the right side or the left side down here. But as you notice, as I turn the cube around, there are no more white squares. Okay. There's one up here, but it's in the wrong position. And then there's one hiding on the very bottom of the cube. Okay. And that's a situation you're going to see fairly often. So let's figure out how to fix it. Same as before. Take the piece that you want and put it underneath where it belongs. Look at this piece. Red, white, and blue. Let's move it underneath where it belongs. It belongs right here, because this is the red, blue, and white sides. Put it underneath where you want it, 
and do those same three moves. Down, over, up. Down means bringing that side down towards you. And you'll notice what that does. It brings the white, which was on the bottom, and puts it in that bottom layer, which is where we want it. Second move is over. That moves it out of the way. Notice it's safely over here now. And again, same as before, up means bringing our pieces back up top. Up. Okay? Now, I have a white square here, but that doesn't matter because this is, what, green and red? That doesn't belong here. I want my red, white, and blue piece to go here. So I bring it over, I put it in position. Once again, it's on my right side, but it could just as easily be on my left. It's on the right. I want it up top. Three moves. Down over, up, down, turning it towards me, over, bringing it over to match, and up. And there you have it. One more to go in, and once again, it's hiding on the bottom, okay? Now, I've already shown you how to fix that, so let me show you how to, how to fix a, a different problem that you'll come across occasionally, okay? And this is the situation that I'm talking about. You'll notice that the white piece um, that you need to fix is already in the correct location. Okay, this white, green, and red piece belongs right there. Okay, but it's not going to, it, it's not in the correct orientation. Okay, this white actually needs to be here, the green square needs to be here, and this red needs to be here. So somehow I need to turn it or rotate it. How are you going to do that? Well, the easy thing is that it's always the same three moves. This second step, okay, is always the same three moves, down, over, and up. Here's what it looks like. This is the side that the white piece is on, so once again, I use my right hand, and I go down, over, brings it over, that puts it out of the way safely, now I bring this side up, okay? And you might be thinking, I didn't accomplish anything. Well, yeah, I did. Because remember what we said, in order to get a piece on top, it first needs to be what? In this bottom layer. And now I have it in the bottom layer. Which means I can position it underneath where it belongs. And once again, three moves will get it up top. Once again, it's on my right hand, and this is kind of unusual, because it could just as easily be on the left side. Put my right hand on it. Down. That means towards me. Bottom over and up. And there you have it, folks. That's steps one and two from this, our seven-step solution guide. Okay? And with practice, as I mentioned, you'll be able to do this more quickly than you would from the typical method that is suggested in the guide. Okay? And let me see if I can uh, show you just one more thing real quick. Okay? I just want to show you what the left hand uh, down looks like. All the moves we've been making have been with the right hand. But, as I said, just as easily you'll have this situ situation, which is the white square that belongs on top is on the left side of the cube. This, of course, would be the right side, my right hand, left side, left hand. Put your left hand on it, same three moves. First one is down, that means down towards you, bottom over, and up. So whether it's left or right makes no difference, same three moves, down, over, and up.